Hi, Carl here from Glencoe Photography. It's really great to see you. Now, those of you who watched my videos in the past, I'm usually out in Glencoe taking nice, beautiful drone shots and landscape photographs. And I'm going to post, so carry on posting those kind of videos. But if you're looking for something like that, then maybe skip this video because this isn't for you. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do a more of a practical session because I've searched long and hard on YouTube to find out how to do this in a nice logical way. And I can't really find anywhere that does it in a basic way. Um, so I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make my own, own vlog for you guys to see how I get a print, mount it and then frame it to sell in my gallery. So come and join me and let me show you how I frame artwork or photos to sell in a gallery. Now we're all really guilty of this as photographers, uh, any photographer really, not just landscapes, is we go out, we take these brilliant shots, we sit there and work on them on Lightroom and Photoshop or whatever, and we have these beautiful images. And then for some bizarre reason, we leave them sitting there on a computer. And there's nothing to compete with actually having a physical image, be it in a frame or whatever, on a wall of something that really does inspire you and you get real pleasure from that every time you look at it rather than it just sitting on a laptop. So there's quite a few options nowadays for you to print your images out. You don't just necessarily have to have a print. So we can go for a canvas and this canvas is from mypicture.co.uk. I'll pop the link down in the description. Uh, so they look pretty good and they're quite a little modern uh, style of printing out your photographs. I quite like them. Um, what I've done with this one, by the way, is as you can see, I've, I've wrapped it in black edging and that just makes it slightly different. And what you're trying to do is to give that sort of premium quality to your to your products if you're going to sell them. Uh, and that's what I've done here. So I've got that nice black edging and that just makes it stand out a little bit different than just a bog standard wrapped canvas. So that's a pretty good idea. Then the other options that you can have is the aluminium prints, which I love. So there's an aluminium print. And that looks fantastic, the, the famous Highland Cow. This is my best selling photograph. Uh, and it's just lovely, it just makes things pop really nice. The colors are so vivid and, and, and just great. And if you're living in a modern house, that works really well. But actually a lot of people prefer just a traditional frame. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you where you print, how to mount them, and then how to put something behind glass and it just makes it look, the really good shot becomes brilliant shot when you've got it on the wall looking at you. So first up, let's talk about prints. Now I'm no expert in printing and I don't actually own a printer myself. I, I think if you're printing on a regular basis, then it's possibly worthwhile having a printer. Uh, because then you get a bit of control over your colours and things like that and you can go back and print them. Um, and there is some labs that are a bit dodgy and for me obviously I'm selling the prints in my gallery so I'm actually sending the same print and some of the prints are 10 years old. The Highland Cow for example is, is 10 years old and I'm sending that print over and over again and a good, the difference between a good lab and a bad lab is if that print comes back the same consistently every single time that is a real high quality lab uh, i have used other labs where i've sent the, the cow in particular it's gone away and then i've sent another batch and it's come back totally different colors or darker or lighter and it's that inconsistency which doesn't work so let's tell you what i do and i use a company called loxley color uh, and I'll, again i'll pop the link down in the description and all i do is i get my image i fire it off to loxley and then i've got a few options i can do a gilet print or i can do just a bog standard fuji film print now like i say i'm no expert in printing it is such a massive area and i really don't know probably one percent of it uh, it is a fine art but the good thing with loxley color and i'm not sponsored by loxley by the way get in touch if you want to but the good thing with loxley color is is they can color correct 
and their expertise is so good that I can go back and look at my Highland Cow picture over the last 10 years and I can pick one I got printed yesterday and I can pick one I got printed 10 years ago and they are identical. And that is a sign of a real good quality lab. Okay, so once you've got your print, now locks the use Fujifilm, which is perfectly fine for what I need. You can do different levels of prints at uh, Loxley and they can, that you can get like gilets and things like that. But the, the bog standard Fujifilm is just enough quality for me uh, and that's all that I need. So what I'm gonna need is I've got my print and then what you're gonna need is there's a real problem with doing these sizes of prints, this 12 by 16. Now you can get away with an A4 a little bit but it's still a bit of a problem. But what happens is over time when you've done an image over time you get something called cockling going on and what that is is as the temperatures change and the moisture levels change in the room the print itself starts sort of wobbling and, and you start getting air bubbles uh, in the print and it doesn't look flat and it looks really cheap now if you're selling these things you expect these things to be dead flat with no air bubbles uh, and, and that just gives you that good quality that you can sell so to get over the cochlein effect what you're going to need is something called an adhesive board so this is a de an adhesive mount board and what it is is it's a bog standard mount board on the back but on the front what you've got is you've got this little bit of uh, kind of paper on the front and, be and below it is this sticky sort of adhesive sort of backing okay so what i'm going to do is i'm then going to put the photo on that backing and then stick it down to make sure that it never moves and cockles within the frame. So this is the tricky bit and probably the hardest part of actually doing framing, uh, I think. So what you need to do is you need to get the mount board itself and then be very careful, peel a bit of the corner off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold it over and as you can see, I'm going to fold it over so I've got a bit of stickiness here, but I've still got the backing board all the way along with this little bit of a flap here. Okay. And then what I can do then is that allows me to pop my print on without it sticking. So I'm going to bring it down. Now this mount board is also 12 by 16. You can get slightly bigger, but I find the 12 by 16 it's easier to align. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring you up a little bit and I'm going to pop this print on there like so and as you can see now I've lined it up with the uh, with the board so it's all nice and lined up but then I can put my hands at the bottom of the board to remember the print is still not stuck down and the reason for this is as soon as you put that print onto the adhesive that's game over you're not taking it back off again so that first stick dictates how far and how well the next section goes so it's, this is the trickiest bit so i've got very dry hands if you want to wear gloves you can but dry your hands make sure you're nice and dry and then i've got the print lined up just with that little bit of a flap at the back there okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use my two fingers and i'm going to stick the first bit down of the print okay so i'm going to stick the first bit down of the print Okay, so now the print is stuck down, still loose this side, but it's just stuck down on that little section there. Okay, and then I'm going to turn the print around and then I'm going to get my, my hand here. If you're left hand, I'm left handed, so I'm doing it this way. If you're right handed, you'll go the other way. And then I'm going to come on up and I'm going to grab the bit of tab that I've pulled off. And this is the tricky bit and be really careful with your print. I'm going to grab the tab that I've pulled off and I can start now just slowly peeling it back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my other hand and I'm going to work down in one direction. And the reason being is I don't want any air bubbles in this. So I'm going to work from one side to the other, pushing all the air out of the way. So by the time I get to the bottom, there's no air bubbles. So take your time. There's no rush for this section. Peel a little bit back and then be aggressive with it and pour, force it down. Put a bit of weight on your hands. Then a little bit more and keep going. And you're going to keep going all the way. One little bit at a time, one section at a time. Forcing the air out that way until you're all the way at the bottom. Okay nearly there 
And the thing is, is don't do this quick. Don't try and do this in a very quick movement, just slowly, slowly, because what you want is you want all that air out of the print so there's no bubbling because the problem is is if you get a little bit of air in there and the temperature changes over the winter and the summer then that air will expand and contract and then you're going to start getting more cockling going on so as you can see i'm nearly there bring you over a bit and then i can peel that little bit off and do the final spread okay and then what I'm going to do, again, remember, really dry hands. What kills prints is, is moisture and wet. So if you've got any slight wet hands on this, you're going to damage the print and that's game over. And then I'm going to be quite firm and I'm going to make sure that the whole print is completely stuck to the adhesive mount. Okay, so now we've got a mount. And a, and a picture which is completely flat and that's never going to come off there it's stuck now the adhesive is so strong that that print is now always going to be flat okay now i need to have a conversation about frames and, and where do you get frames what to do with frames now i think it's really important for me to say this isn't the craft frame where I'm going to start soaring up and making angles and all this and that. That's a real fine art and there's real crafts people that do that. And if you've got an image that is an unusual size, then sometimes you've got to get a bespoke frame. And a framer is definitely worth getting that done properly if it's such a great image. My problem for me is if I'm selling images in my gallery, then the cost of actually framing up something like that becomes so big that uh, I couldn't sell them. I, I put my mark up on and I wouldn't be able to sell them in my gallery. Uh, and I think that's an important thing to say is my gallery is based in the Scottish Islands in the Balahoolish Visitor Centre, which is the business I own. And it's a very tourist area. So uh, if you're going to do ga big galleries and big prints like that, and you can get Loxy and actually Loxy Colour will do these things for you as well. Um, then it's worth paying the money. And you can, if you can manage to sell a print for 200, 300 quid, or even if you go big and sell them for a thousand pounds, which some people do, then that's brilliant. I'm not, gallery's not in that area. We're not in central Edinburgh. So uh, my gallery's more aimed at the market, which is the tourist market. So there's a few options with framing. What I tend to do then is, is I will always do my frames with standard sizes, and that allows me to get mounts and frames quite easily. So the company I use is a company called The Frame Company. And they're excellent they really are and they've got a massive range of frames and they're relatively good quality but at a good price which means it allows me to sell my images and my frames prints at a decent price for the general public and what the frame company do is you get a box uh, you order your print, all the different sizes, all the different coloured mounts, all this kind of stuff. And then you order it and then about a week later you get a box and in it are your frames and your mounts or whatever you've chosen. So what you get is you get a f the frame comes from the frame company and you get a mount as well. So And it comes in a little cellophane wrapper so you rip the cellophane off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my table's nice and clean, make sure there's no grit or anything on the table itself. If you want to put some cardboard down, you can do. And that the way I'm going to put the frame down onto the table uh, and that way it kind of protects the frame. So now the frame is facing forwards, I can actually take the back off. Okay, so once the frame's down on the table, what you get is you get these little sort of spikes that are stuck in all the way around and that holds the backboard on. And you need to bend these out the way to get access to the actual glass. So be careful of these things, they're very sharp. I and mean, if I can tell you how many times I've cut my finger on these things, it's incredible. So you're gonna lift them up. And for this one, it's fine, I can use my thumbs. If you don't want to, you can use a pair of scissors and just get them up like that. My thumbs work quite well for this one. So I'm gonna come all the way around the print. So now I've come all the way around the outside of the frame and then what you get with these is you get two little tags here, one tag there and one tag there. And what I'll do is I'll use my thumbnail and I'll just get underneath the 
the hanger tag and I'll just lift it off and that allows me access to the frame itself. So we've got access to the glass. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glass cleaner on there, just a tiny amount, and then I'm going to clean it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fingers for this. And the reason is, is I can apply a little bit of pressure. Remember you're working with glass, so don't go too mad. But also what that does is it keeps my hand up and high because these little tags all the way around here that hold the back of the frame on are really sharp. And if you go like that, you're going to cut your hand over them. So by doing it like that, you're going to end up going all the way to the corners that allows you to get into the corners and then it also allows you to clean the frame without cutting your hand wide open and the last thing you want to do right now is slash your wrists so I'm going to go all the way through and get it nice and clean and what I can do is I can put my head down and I can look when I put my head down I can look and see the reflection and I can see how clean the glass is because obviously I don't want any smears or bits on the glass itself okay then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the glass up and lift it up slightly and then I'm going to get my cloth and I'm going to work down the frame. So I'm going to come all the way along and work down the frame. Okay. And then once I've done that, I'm going to come up again and I'm going to get the frame that way. Now any lint or dust is now at this side of the frame. So any lint or dust is at this side of the frame. And now if I just bring that all the way down, I've just got it all down into the corner there. And then I can just make sure I've got rid of all that and cleaned it up. And that way you've got all the lint and any bits off. Occasionally there's one that gets slipped through the noose, but that's fine. Right, back to the mount. So I've got the picture itself here, which is, remember, I've stuck down already. And then I've got the mount that comes with it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of stick the mount onto the, to the frame. Now, the thing to do with this is you can get this tape here. And this tape is pH neutral, okay? And the reason for that is you can't just use normal masking tape because over time, masking tape is slightly acid. And then you'll see that coming through the, the print and the frame over a period of time. So you've got to make sure you've got a specialist craft pH neutral tape, which is going to stick your mount to your photo. Um, it's not very expensive. And again, you can go online. There's plenty of shops that do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit and I'm going to cut off and allow me a little bit of tape here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my print, turn it upside down, and I'm going to stick that tape along the side of the print. Okay, I'm going to stick that tape along the side of the print. I'm going to do the same again. So we're going to take another good, good amount and cut it off. And we're going to do the same again for the other side. Okay, so I'm going to stick it down. It has to be quite neat, but it doesn't have to be fabulous because nobody's going to see this section. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to pop it down. OK, so I've got the, the print there and I've got the tape on it. And then I'm going to just line up the mount with the print itself. Just about gets there. And then I'm going to put a bit of pressure on here and make sure that's nice and stuck down. And then the print is stuck down. OK, now this is a, the fun bit. You're going to need to put your mark on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sign three sisters of Glencoe. And I'm going to pop in a signature here. OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn over the print itself. And I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and stuck down here. So I'm going to really put a bit of pressure on this. And it's quite critical. You can even use your thumbnail just to make sure. I've got a little bit here, so I'm just going to come up a bit. Just to make sure that this is not going to move ever. Because once you're in the frame, you don't want to be taking it back out again. So I'm really going to make sure this is not, and I can be really aggressive with this because this is just board and this is just board. So I can be really aggressive with it with my thumbnail and make sure it's nice and stuck down. Okay, so I've got the frame down with the glass facing down the way. And we know this is nice and clean now. Just have a quick check, make sure but it looks pretty clean. Then I'm going to get my mount and picture. I'm going to face it down and I'm going to drop it into the frame recess like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the back. Now, here's a little tip for you. 
you will see at the back that there's the two hangers. This is for portrait orientation and this is for landscape orientation. So what I'm going to do is I'm, this is a landscape orientated shot. So I'm going to use this one here. Now when it's flat, it's really hard to get your fingernail and get it bent out because obviously it needs to stick out a little bit for it to hang. So before you do anything else at this moment when there's a bit of flex in the back, flex it down a little bit. This is a nice easy place just to bring the hanger up a little bit. So now what you can see is the hanger is slightly up a little bit from the back of the board and that's going to make a big difference later on. And then what you need to do is you need to make sure, and here's a common mistake, is you've got to make sure that the top of the hanger fits the top of the print. Okay, so your top of the hanger should be fitting the top of the print. Don't put this board on upside down else you're in trouble. So we're going to rest the board into the frame itself. And then what I've got is I've got these metal tabs that I've told you about before. And we're going to bend one or two of these over. So what I tend to do is just bend a few over and then I'm going to lift the frame up just to make sure and it doesn't matter if it's upside down to make sure I've got no anything in there nothing little dots or little marks hairs or dust or anything like that and it looks pretty clean okay once I've done that then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold down all the rest of the little stakes and be careful and be logical with this because again if you leave one then you're going to end up cutting yourself later on. So make sure you folded down all the little tags. Good. Okay. Okay, we're nearly there now. And actually this frame will now sort of stand on a wall and look okay. But there's one extra step I like to do. And what we want to do is we want to seal off the frame itself from any moisture getting in. So we're going to seal that off. So what you get is this stuff called uh, backing tape for frames. Uh, and it's quite a nice little, little bit of tape here, which will seal off and make sure we reduce the amount of moisture going into the frame, which again will stop things moving about and cockling and getting damaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm, all I'm going to do is just going to stick it at the top there and give myself a little bit of overlap and then just stick the bit down at the bottom and then I'm going to slowly sl put that all the way down and then when I get to the bottom or the top I'm just going to cut it off nice and neat okay and then I'm going to go all the way around the frame doing the same thing and what you want to do is you want to make it look relatively neat because then that gives you that professional look uh, and then if somebody's buying that and they take it off the wall and see it's all nice and neat then they know they're getting a good quality product. So I'm just going to stick it all the way around. So I'm going to stick it all the way around and as you can see I've kind of got some on the edge of the frame and some on the backboard as well and that's sealed the whole frame up and also it's hidden all those little tabs which can get caught as well. And I'm going to do a nice neat job of the cut at the end there and it just makes it look nice and neat. And again, add a little bit of pressure there, just make sure it's nice and stuck down and just looks professional. Okay, the final section is to turn the print over. And then what you want to do is, again, just get your cloth. And now this cloth has probably got a little bit of moisture on it from when you clean the back side of the glass. So now we can just go around and just make sure it's nice and clean. And we're going to clean the front side of the glass. OK, well, that's the final print. That's us all finished. And now we can hang that on the wall to sell.